2020. Are you guys ready to have an encounter with Jesus Christ? Come on, let's sing, let's worship. Goes like this. Yeah, it's all that serves the spirit And it calls the heart to life It's an anthem in the making Can you feel it start to rise? Can you hear the generation Getting louder over time? Every son and every daughter Singing out into the night It's not to be silent, don't you dare hide your light. There's a world outside your window, so don't let it pass you by. Lift your head to the heavens, lift your voice to the sky. Praise the Lord of all creation, let His name be lifted high. Here we go, sing it. From the palace to the streets I can feel that drum beat pulsing And it's calling you and me I can hear the world waking Oh, the sound is heavenly Every tribe and every nation Singing Jesus, I believe It's not time to be silent Don't you dare Such a beautiful sight. All the world, come on, see the world. See the world light up one heart at a time. See the strongholds break in the blink of an eye. Stepping on our sin, nowhere in sight. Who the Lord, He's alive. See the lost return from the dead of the night. Every captive free, every chain left behind. Have you ever seen such a beautiful sight?
What's up GTSM? Welcome to Road Trip 2020. Just like any other road trip, we are gonna have an amazing weekend. But just like any other road trip, we gotta have some rules. First rule is, respect the people, be nice in the comments. We don't need nobody giving, being disrespectful to one another. Be nice in the comments. Post what God's doing for you in this weekend. Don't make fun of anybody in this weekend. Let, we just wanna hear what God is doing to you in this weekend. Also, respect the schedule. Make sure that you are at every service, every small group the event, everything that we are gonna be doing this weekend. Respect the schedule because we need you there. If you want God to impact your life, respect the schedule. Respect your parents' property. What does that mean? Don't be dancing on your mama's couch. Just saying, she ain't going like that, we're not going like that, and we don't want the emails. So respect your parents' property. Respect yourself. Stay hydrated. It's gonna be hot. No matter where you're at, whether we were used to be at the beach or if you're in your front house, it's still gonna be hot. Stay hydrated. And also, if you gotta go, you gotta go. There's one last rule, and you already know what it is. And please, don't make me paint myself like Pastor Scott in purple. That means no purple. Matter of fact, you should be six feet apart no matter where you are. So once again, all the GTSM students, no purple. Matter of fact, I gotta go. One more thing, GTSM students. I want to encourage you in so many ways to get this journal that you got this week and fill it out. We may not be at the beach, we may not be at the place that we're used to, but I wanna encourage you, don't chase the place, chase the person. Chase the person of Jesus Christ, because no matter where you're at, he's there, and he can change your life, no matter if you're sitting in the living room or if you're sitting on the beach. Jesus Christ is everywhere. So I wanna encourage you, this weekend, nothing will happen unless you start taking notes and taking your faith serious. And then another thing, GTSM students, no matter where you are, you can worship God. I know we're not gonna be in a room with 200 students, but I wanna encourage you with something that David said. I will not give my God anything that doesn't cost me. And so I'm encouraging you students, no matter where you are, is to give something to God this weekend that's gonna cost you in this worship time. So as we go into worship, I'm asking you to prepare your hearts, whether you're in, your, in the living room with your small group or you're sitting there by yourself, open your heart to what God's going to do to you for this worship time. Yeah, come on, let's have some fun tonight. In all, all of these 
we sing I love you Lord you've done 
what you're going to do, the things that we haven't seen yet, the things that we don't know. Jesus, we love you. We give you this time of worship. In your name we pray. Amen. And amen. Well, hey guys, welcome to Road Trip 2020. I am so excited you are here. I am pumped up because I believe that God is going to change lives this weekend. But before we jump into our first talk, let's just acknowledge the truth. It's different. Right, usually if you've been around GTSM for any length of time, you, you've gone to road trip with us and you know that on Friday night, we, there are hundreds of us in a room and we are pumped up. We've spent all day hanging out with our friends and now we are just ready to see what God's going to do. And when you look around the room you're sitting in right now, maybe you're by yourself or maybe you decided to host a watch party with a couple of your friends and so you see a couple of your friends around the room with you but you're, it's still not the same. But let me challenge you with something. The same God that meets us when you're in a room with hundreds of people is the same God that's sitting in your room right now, students. It's the same God that wants to change your life this weekend, students. But let me challenge you. There's a key. There's something you have to do in order for God to change your life this weekend. And that's simply this, lean in. So my challenge to you is, yes, this weekend is different. But that doesn't mean that God's not here. That doesn't mean God's not in your room. And if you want to see God move in your life this weekend, then you need to lean in and you need to say, God, I'm going to do whatever it takes to see you move in my life this weekend. Now, let me get really practical with you. Right now, if you don't already have it out in front of you, you need to get your journal out. If you didn't get a GTSM journal this past week, if you didn't get to the church to pick one up, that's okay. Get any piece of paper or notebook you have and get a pen because you're going to want to take notes this weekend. Why? Because I don't want this weekend to only stay at this weekend. I want it to change your life forever. So I want you to be taking notes this weekend. You're going to want to have a Bible with you as well. You're going to want to be comfortable, but we're going to lean in while we're sitting in comfort. We're going to take notes. And then lastly, I want you to participate. You're watching this on YouTube right now, and if you're watching it live with us, go ahead and participate in the chat. In, in fact, let's do this right now. In the chat right now, students, I want you to put your name and grade right now. Name and grade. Everybody who's watching this, I don't care if you normally chat with us or not, put your name and grade. Oh, and if you're one of our adult leaders, just put adult leader in there. If you're a random adult watching, because somehow you got the link, just put random adult. No, don't put random adult. Just say, hey, I'm an adult. If you're my mom, mom, I love you. If you're watching this live, go ahead and put Pastor Scott's mom in there. That's awesome. But let us know who you are and what grade you're in. And if you're one of our brand new sixth grade students, man, we are pumped that you're here with us because I can't wait to, to show you and to let you see what God is gonna do in your life this weekend. And so we're gonna kick off tonight. You're gonna notice there's a water bottle on the, gonna be on the podium all weekend long while we're speaking. I thought it was just a cool idea for me, but all of our sermon titles are on the water bottle that you'll see up here, and you'll see as we go along, you'll see how that plays out. Tomorrow morning, my really good friend, Pastor Luke, is gonna be speaking with us tomorrow morning. It's gonna be awesome. Tomorrow night, we're gonna have a, a, a great service followed by a worship night on Saturday night that is going to be incredible. We're gonna wrap the weekend up on Sunday morning. And all throughout the weekend, there's going to be small group times that I need you to plug into. And even if you don't normally get on our small group Zooms, I need you to get on our Zoom small groups this weekend because we want to see God change our lives. But in order to do that, we've got to lean in. That's right, lean in. But you know, as we jump into tonight's talk, students, you know, what I find interesting is um, chat slang is always interesting to me. I don't always understand it. I don't always get it. I usually have to Google it to figure it out, like things like LOL. Now, put it in the chat. If you know what LOL means, put it in the chat right now. Go ahead. Put it in the chat. Yeah, right? It means lots of laughs, right? Or laugh out loud. It means laugh out loud, right? La laugh out loud. But some people, if you're older, you may know it as lots of love. Now, if you, if you have ever thought of it as laugh out loud, and if you've ever thought of it as lots of love, you got to be careful when you use that thing. Right, because if someone's dog dies and you text them LOL, meaning lots of love, they might not take that the right way. Oh, and by the way, 
Whose decision was it anyway that it was okay to just remove all the vowels from words and that we should still be able to communicate with each other? Or how about this one? W-Y-A. What do you think that means? If you know it, put it in the chat right now. W-Y-A. That's right. It means where you at, right? It might, your friends are probably saying, where you at? So they know where you are. Or how about this one? Yak TV. Y-A-K TV. Now, I got to tell you, this one's a little bit harder. Yak TV. Anybody know what it means? Let's see. Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. It means you already know the vibes. In other words, you already know what's going on. You know what's happening right now. And lastly, how about this one? I-Y-K-Y-K. That's right. I-Y-K-Y-K. When we were talking about this weekend and I told our, our production team the, the certain titles for the weekend, someone, someone stopped us in the middle of the meeting and said, hey, what does I-Y-K-Y-K stand for? Does anybody know? Put it in the chat if you know. That's right. It means if you know, you know. If you know, you know. So tonight, if you've got a Bible, I want you to turn to John chapter four. So in your notebooks, I want you to write Friday night message, Pastor Scott, I-Y-K-Y-K, -Y -K, John chapter four. And John chapter four, starting at verse four, this is what it says. It says, now he, he being Jesus, he had to go through Samaria. So I wanna talk to some students tonight who say, I don't really wanna go through this stuff we're going through right now. Like, isn't there a way around the 2021 the 2020, 2021 school year? Like, can I take a personal gap year so I don't have to deal with all this mask crap that we have to wear at school or social distancing that we have to be careful about? Now, listen, I, hear me say this. When I say mask crap, I don't mean that masks are wrong, bad. Because we need to, be care, we need to care about those around us because that's how Jesus, what Jesus challenges us to do. But my point is like, there are students right now and they say, I just don't really want to deal with school this year. School is different. I just want to go back to last year. I just wish I could go back to the way it was before. Can I just take a pass? But here's the deal. You have to go through this, just like the Bible says that now Jesus had to go through Samaria. Now, here's what's interesting about the Samaria, about Samaritans, the people who lived in Samaria. Samaritans were considered the lowest of the low. In fact, some Jewish believers, they didn't even believe the Samaritans were worthy of someone telling them about Jesus. If you were walking down the street and you saw a Samaritan walking towards you, you'd go to the other side of the street and you would totally avoid them. That hits a little different right now in our society, doesn't it? When we're trying to, where we all now have a six foot social distancing bubble around us. And when you walk into a store with a bunch of people that you don't know, you immediately begin judging who you think might be sick and who might not be sick. And so you begin maneuvering around the room so as to keep distance between you and everybody else. That's what it was like in Bible days. And some of you might say, we wanna go around this thing, we wanna skip this thing, but you need to go through this because God is leading you through this to teach you and prepare you for what he has for you. And remember, whatever gets revealed gets healed. In fact, put that in your notes right now. Whatever gets revealed gets healed. If God reveals something to you in this season, it's because he wants to heal you of it in this season. The Holy Spirit during this season will bring some things to light, not to condemn you, not so he can con uh, con uh, accuse you or call you terrible. Listen, we'll leave social media for that. But he's revealing, them, he's revealing them so you can deal with them and so that you can be ready to step into what he has for you. Now let's get back to Jesus. Now Jesus had to go through Samaria. Verse five, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jo Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, being tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well and it was about noon. I want you to remember that. It was about noon. Verse number seven, when the Samaritan woman, when a Samaritan woman <clears throat> came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? Verse eight, his disciples had gone into town to buy food. Now here's what's important to note. Jesus was walking through Samaria with his boys. He had his disciples with him. 
And as they came upon this well, Jesus sent all of his followers into town to buy some food. He sent them into Chick-fil-A because it's Friday night, Chick-fil-A is open. He sent them into Chick-fil-A and said, hey, get us a bunch of nugget trays and let's, let's, let's have a good time tonight, let's eat, right? But he sent them away. And I wanna challenge you with something, that Jesus is getting rid of some guys that are not going to understand what he's about to do. Some of you students will need to get rid of some friends in your life right now because they're not gonna understand what God wants to do in your life. There are some friends who aren't gonna understand why you're streaming this this weekend. They don't understand why you're sitting in your room by yourself with YouTube on because you wanna, you wanna see God move in your life. And I wanna challenge you that some of you students are going to have to remove some friends in your life, not forever, not permanently, but just in this season so that God can do something that only he can do in your life. You're gonna need to get some separation in order for your preparation to begin with God. Ooh, write that down in your notes. You need to get some separation so that you can get your preparation. You might need to kick some people out. You might have some negative people in your lives, some naysayers in your lives, some people that don't believe in you, some people that look at you and say, Listen, why are you really trying this? I don't think you can actually do it. You might need to separate from them. You might need to put them on mute. Jesus had to go through Samaria, but in order to go through Samaria, he had to first get rid of the guys he walked around with because they weren't going to understand what he was about to do. And God and Jesus said, you guys need to go this way because I need to talk to a woman at the well. Now he didn't say it out loud, but that's, what happened and what's strange about this woman is that her name isn't even recorded. We have no idea what this lady's name is. We only know two things about her. We know where she is from and we know where she is right now. We know where she's from, we know she's a Samaritan woman and we know where she is right now because she's at the well, but we don't know her name. And isn't it crazy, students? How sometimes people judge you from where you're from and where you are right now without even knowing your name or anything about you. People just slap a label on you and they don't even know who you are. They don't know what you've done. They don't know what you're capable of. And that's what happened to this woman. This woman was at the well at noon in the afternoon at 12 o'clock in the middle of the day and not one of the, in the hottest part of the day. She was at the well. And so the Samaritan woman, let's go back in verse nine. The Samaritan woman said to him, being Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews did not associate with Samaritans. If you know, you know. This, at this time in history, Jews and Samaritans would not associate with each other. In fact, it was so bad that if a Samaritan touched anything, a Jewish person would not touch that. So the very fact that Jesus, who is Jewish, is asking for this Samaritan woman for a drink from her bottle, her jar, is countercultural to everything that's happening in his day. The hatred was so deep that if a Samaritan touched something, a Jewish person wouldn't touch it. Maybe one of the reasons why Jesus sent his friends away is because he knew they weren't gonna understand what God was about to do. So here he is on his way from Judea down to Galilee and he has to go through Samaria and he comes to a well in the middle of the day and he sees a woman at the well in the middle of the day and here's why this is weird. Remember I just said this, that it was odd because it was in the middle of the day at noon, at the hottest part of the day, you see, at this time, the cultural norm would be for all of the women in the town, they would go and get water together early in the morning when it was cool. Nobody would go to the well at noon because it was just too hot to walk. They would get together as a group and they'd go get well, they'd go get water, they'd draw water together. It was kind of their version of coffee talk. And so they would kind of go to the well and they would get their water and then bring it home. But in the heat of the day, this lady is drawing water on her own by herself. And Jesus looks at her and says, please give me something to drink. Verse number 10, Jesus answered her. If you knew 
the gift of God, and who it is who asks for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. In other words, Jesus is saying, if you only knew. Have you ever been in a situation where you just wish you knew what was going to happen before you did anything? I mean, isn't that what's happening right now in our society in general, right? Let's just talk about school, right? If, if all of us as adults, if all of your teachers and administrators, if they knew what was going to happen, then they would make decisions based on what they knew what was going to happen. But the reality is, is we don't know what is going to happen. And so we have to make be our best educated guess with what we're dealing with around us. And the decisions we make as adults don't just affect us, they also affect you as students and kids. But if I only knew, I would have done this differently. I would have never said that. I would have never sent that text. Have you ever gotten in trouble because you sent a bad text? You sent it and you wish you could take it back. I-Y-K-Y-K. -Y -Y -K. If you only know, if you know, you know. And that's what Jesus is saying in verse number 10. If you only knew, he was talking to a woman he just met. But you see, this woman isn't only carrying a jar. This woman's also carrying the labels that she's been wearing around for months and years. That's why she's there in the middle of the day in the first place, because none of the other ladies wanted to be seen with her in public. And Jesus was asking her for water. And when Jesus says, if you know, you know, it seems kind of unfair to this woman, right? Because this is Jesus. He's God in human form and he knows everything. And, but and how is this woman supposed to know the gift that God is giving her? And Jesus knows everything and he's trying to get her to see something. And maybe this woman thought, well, how do you know? And don't we wonder that too in our lives, students? How do you know that gift that God has for you? How do you know who to listen to? How do you know what choices to make? How do you know what college to apply for? How do you know who you should date? How do you know that you can trust the gift that God has for you? How do you know? And in verse 11, the woman responds to Jesus and he kind of, she kind of, to be fair, she kind of throws some attitude his way. This is what she says, sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as did his sons and his livestock? She starts to ask how because maybe, just maybe, if she can figure out how, then she can figure out this living water he's trying to give her. So she starts to ask how. Not just how is she going to get this living water, but how is Jesus going to get it to her? He doesn't have any way to, to get water out of the well. And the problem is, <clears throat> with wanting to know how, is that we're never really satisfied. You see, when we ask how, we get caught up in the how. We get caught up in the steps of how am I ever going to invite my friends to church when we're not meeting in person? How am I ever going to get into college when I'm struggling with classes I have in middle school? How am I ever going to see change in this country if I don't even know what I believe? How? And here's the thing, and I want you to write this down right now. How is not our job. Write it down. In fact, put that in the chat right now. How is not our job. How is not our job. Because if we're really honest, if we knew how everything worked, we wouldn't need God anyway because we wouldn't need faith. So what's faith? Hebrews chapter 11 teaches us what it is. It says, now faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you cannot see. How is not our job? So then Jesus answers in verse 13. He says, everyone who drinks the water, this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And the woman said to him, sir, Give me this water so I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. See, the woman now recognizes that Jesus has something that she needs. So she just asks him, hey, can you give it to me? And I wonder if she was thinking, this is great. Because if I can just get this water, then I won't have to come back again. 
I won't have to keep coming to this well in the middle of the day in the hottest part of the day because I'm unwelcome with the women of the town. I won't have to sneak around town because now I can just stay in my house. I can just ignore people. I can ignore the world around me because I don't really care what they think. I'm just gonna ignore everybody because I don't need to go out anymore because I have this water that never ends. But see, here's the thing. What Jesus says next has nothing to do with getting water. It's kind of odd. Verse 16, Jesus tells her, he told her, go call your husband and come back. Now, what in the world does her husband have to do with getting water anyway? I mean, really? Why would her husband have to come in order for him to get this water, in order for her to get this water that Jesus has that never runs out? You see, but here's the thing. Jesus didn't give her steps how he was going to provide it. He wasn't telling her how. And he's not giving her the next step that he's going to take. What Jesus is doing is challenging her to take the first step. And her response is kind of classic. In verse 17, she says, I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you're right when you say you have no husband. Verse 18, the fact is you've had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have said is quite true. Now, this must have been a really uncomfortable situation for this lady. Like, think about it. Someone you just met began telling you, begins to tell you everything you've ever done wrong. Your darkest, deepest sins that you try to hide from people, that you don't really want people to know, the labels that you've allowed to be placed on you that you don't want people to see, that you pray people never find out about. And he calls it out in her. And so she says, I wonder... I wonder if she says, I wonder what else this guy knows. So verse number, tw- verse number 19, sir, the woman replied, I can see that you're a prophet. So she begins to ask more and more questions. Verse 20, our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. And now she shifted from how do you know, but she shifts to what do you know? I think she generally wanted to know from Jesus the answer to these questions. And here's what's interesting, students. Remember when you were a child and you were challenged to learn new things? What were you told to do? You were told to ask questions. But something happens when you become a teenager, right? And you begin to question your faith and you begin to try to process how this whole thing works with God who you can't see, but he's real. And Jesus, his son who died for you and wants to have a relationship with you. How does this work? What in the world is this all about? I don't understand. So you begin to ask questions and all of a sudden, when you were a child, you were told it's great to ask questions. And now when you're a teenager, you start asking questions about your faith in God. And all of a sudden, adults look at you and say, why are you doubting? But I wanna tell you students, here in GTSM, here at GT Church, I want you to know Don't ever let anyone tell you that your questions about God are dumb or pointless or that you're doubting. God's not afraid of your questions. I look at it this way. God created the human brain in the first place, so he's not concerned about little things like your doubt. And I know it seems big to you, but in the scope of eternity, he wants you to ask your questions. And I want you to know at GTSM, this is a safe place for you to ask your questions. And it's amazing to see that Jesus didn't just push her to the side while she was asking. Now, he even goes on to answer some of her questions, right? In verse 21, look back to scripture. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. And I think, I think what Jesus is doing in this moment is predicting the year 2020. Pastor Scott, what are you talking about? Did you catch what he said? It's no longer gonna matter if you worship the Father in, in this building or in this specific place, in a church building or through a screen in your bedroom or through a, or through a, a, a big a worship center at Harvey Cedars where we've been going for road trip for years or in the new place that we're gonna go next year, hashtag contract for 2020 is already booked. September 10th, 11th, and 12th, 2021. Don't miss it. It's going to be awesome. Come on. If you know, you know. This is for 2020 right now. Listen, God doesn't exist in a building. He exists in you. You don't need a building in order to worship God. You just need you and an open heart. And you need to lean in. And God will meet you right there. And the woman said this. 
Verse 25, the woman said, I know the Messiah. The Christ is coming. When he comes, he'll explain all of this. She's basically done. She's like, I'm gonna shut you down right now. And then what Jesus says shifts everything. Verse 26, then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. The whole time she's focused on how, but if you know, you know, because if you know how, then you know. If you know how God is going to solve your problem, you know, but that wasn't it. So the lady shifted to more questions. She shifted, she said, okay, so maybe if you know what you know, Maybe if you just know what the future's gonna look like, then you'll know. Maybe if you just know how long this thing's gonna last, you'll know. Maybe if you just know how long it's gonna be, or maybe you'll just know, maybe if you just know what school will look like on January the 1st or 2nd, whenever we go back in the spring, in the winter, boy, boy, in the new year. If we just know what it's gonna look like, then we can be okay, right? Because I don't know about you, but for me, like, when I'm struggling, if, I, if you just tell me what I've got to go through, I can make it through it. But that wasn't it. Because here's the thing. What she began realizing in that moment is it wasn't how and it wasn't what, but it was who. It was who. And what happened next is incredible. She leaves her jar there, which is incredibly important to her survival. She leaves her jar with Jesus and runs back into town and runs into the middle of her village and begins yelling for all to hear. She says, come and see this man who told me everything I did. Could this be the Messiah? And the Bible tells us that because of what she did, streams of people came to Jesus and came to know him. She stood up in the middle of the village and she yelled, come and see this man. But in order for this to have the greatest impact on you students, you have to realize what the middle of the village meant for her. You see this woman, in Bible days in this time, the middle of the village, yes, it was kind of the cultural center of the city. It's where people would come and meet together and fellowship or, or hang out together. But it was also the place where people were judged the most. It's kind of like your school hallway or cafeteria. That when you walk in on that first day and you don't have the right shoes or the right clothes, or you don't walk a certain way or talk a certain way, you feel judged. But this woman was even worse. But that's because that's what the middle of the village meant to her. You see, in, in her day, when we read this, when we read this passage of scripture, we read about this woman and how she had five husbands and she's now living with someone who isn't her husband. We first go to a scandalous woman, right? We think, oh, this woman is so terrible. But you see, in those days, a woman couldn't just leave her husband. This woman just didn't go from one husband to the next, to the next, to the next. She wasn't. She wasn't someone who went from one guy to the next, to the next, to the next. Because in this day, in order for you to get a divorce, here's what would happen. A woman couldn't even initiate a divorce. But if a man wanted to divorce his, ha his wife, all he would have to do is drag her, bring her to the middle of the village, and essentially announce to everyone, I don't want this woman anymore. Now let's think about this woman, students. This woman who didn't have it happen to her once, not twice, not three times, not four times, but five times someone grabbed her, took her into the city, into the middle of the village and said, I don't want her anymore. So can you imagine what the middle of the village meant to her? That was the point of her greatest shame I often wonder that morning when she was walking to the well, would she avoid the center of the village every day because of how painful it was, right? There's places that we remember because they're happy places, but there's also places that we'll avoid because things have hurt us there or, or they've, they've been hard for us to deal with. And can you imagine the guilt and shame that this lady must have felt every day? You wanna talk about someone who had a problem of self-worth. Every time she walked into that village, she had to remind herself 
that yet another person didn't want her. And I can imagine her going through back villages, snaking her way through town so as to be able to avoid people. And maybe that day she avoided it on her way to meet Jesus. And maybe tonight you're watching this. And maybe you're avoiding the center of your village. That place that you're ashamed of. That part of your life that you're holding back. Maybe for you it's your whole life. And you kind of avoid it because you don't want to talk about it. Because you don't want to deal with it. Because you're ashamed of it. That's what this woman dealt with. In the beginning of the story, she didn't even want to be seen. But by the end of the story, she went to the very place where she would be seen the most because when she knew who the person she was speaking to, she knew that God had given her a gift and the gift was Jesus himself because it's not how you know, students, and it's not what you know, it's who you know that makes all the difference because if you know who, you know. And that thing can take you back in the center of your village and declare that Jesus is king and that Jesus is Lord of your life. So what's the village in your life? Let me tell you mine as we wrap up tonight. For me, my village is the phrase, you're not good enough. And I gotta tell you, this whole thing with COVID when we had to shut down the church and we're trying to figure out what a student ministry looked like but we can't meet in a building and how are we gonna do road trip when I can't rent buses and I can't get a couple hundred kids to go to the beach and I can't get a couple hundred kids in a room. How are we gonna do this? And the little voice, the center of my village that I keep coming back to is you're not good enough. But let me challenge you with something, students. Because if you know who, you know. If you know Jesus, you know. So this Friday night of road trip right now, here's my challenge to you. Here's my question. Have you given your entire life to Jesus? Have you made that commitment? Have you made that step to say, God, I will follow you no matter what I face this year? Because if you know, you know. It doesn't matter what I face at school this year because I'm going after Jesus. I'm going to lean in this weekend because God wants to change my life and he wants to use me to change the world. If you know, you know. So let me ask you a question, students. I wonder if there's any students watching this. Whether you're watching it live or if someone shared this link with you, I want you to know you're not here by accident. You're here because God wanted you to be here because if you know, you know. And if you're here tonight and you say, Pastor Scott, I'd like to ask, I'd like to ask Jesus into my life. In a moment, I'm gonna lead you in a prayer and it's just, it's just simple, it's not a magical formula, it's just simply acknowledging that Jesus, I want you more than I want anything else. Would you come in my life? Would you lead, would you become my leader, my very best friend? And if you're here and that's you and you want Jesus to be the leader of your life and you say, I'm tired of going into the village and being embarrassed, I'm done with that, I'm done with being ashamed, I'm gonna follow Jesus and wherever it is he calls me to go, I'm gonna follow him. Would you pray this prayer with me? Say, dear Jesus, I need you desperately. And I know that I've messed up, but would you come into my life? Would you forgive my sin? And would you be my Lord and my leader and my very best friend? And I will live for you from this day forward. Thank you for the change you're going to make in me. I love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now let me ask one more thing, students. Those of you, maybe you're watching this and you say, well, I've already asked Jesus in my life. So great, so let me ask you this question. Where's the middle of your village? Where's the center of your village, students? Because God wants to deal with that this weekend. God wants to change your life this weekend. And if you lean in and you give it to him, he will. You'll become a new person just like this lady. The Samaritan woman, we don't even know her name, but because of her, dozens and dozens of people's lives were changed. Scripture says streams of people came to Jesus because of her. 
So if that's you and you say, God, I want you to use me this weekend to change my school, to change the people around me. Let me pray for you as well. God, I pray for each and every student that's here that this weekend, you would prepare them for what you have prepared for them. God, don't let this be another weekend. God, let this be a weekend of life change as we lean in to what it is that you wanna do in our lives. And we'll give you the honor and praise and glory for it. And it's not about us, it's about you. And we love you in Jesus' name, amen. Let me challenge you with one more thing before we wrap up with a closing worship song, students. Don't do this weekend alone. You all know people that you need to share this message with, right? Just clear the share, click the share button. Click the share button when the service is over and share it with your friends. Come on, who cares? Bring them in. It's never been easier to share God with someone else than it is right now. Man, you used to have to work up the courage to tell somebody about Jesus. Now all you've got to do is click the share button and say, hey, I saw the service tonight. You should watch it. It's incredible. I challenge you to watch it with me. Let's watch this together. Click the share button. Listen, we're going to close in worship tonight. This weekend's going to change your life, students, and I am so excited for what is about to come. Let's worship together. Come on, let's receive this blessing before we go.
be upon in a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you for a thousand generations in your family and your children and their Come on, children may his favor. and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and inside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you What a great start to Road Trip this weekend. Thank you so much, Pastor Scott, for a great word tonight. And if you know, you know. Am I, am I right? <laughs> All right, listen, guys, small groups are gonna start in about 10 minutes. And here's how you get to your small groups. You're gonna click the link below in the description, and then that's gonna give you all the information you need to know about your small groups. So again, they start in about 10 minutes. So that's enough time, I think, personally, to go grab a snack and then come on back and get into your small groups because again, the fun just 
started and you don't want to miss out. And then once small groups are over, don't forget that you're going to come back again tonight at 10 o'clock for late night here on YouTube. We'll see you then.